all maps are inherently imperfect models of the places that they represent. So the mathematician Alfred Kozybski explained this by using the phrase that's now become the standard way of, it, of describing it when he said the map is not the territory. But he went on to say that a good map has the same logical structure as the territory that it represents. So we can see this by looking at these maps of Edinburgh, we can see that almost nothing is represented on this map. Almost everything that could be represented is left out. And if we zoom in, we get uh, an overview map that starts to show a bit more information. It shows motorways and a few other roads, but still leaves out most of those, leaves out most railway lines. If we keep zooming in a little further, we get to see a bit more detail. We get to see more roads now. We get to see more information about those roads. For example, we can see their, their numbers now. We get to see the names and outlines of smaller settlements. This more detailed map, which shows virtually every street in Edinburgh, now shows things like the tram stops. If we keep zooming in to this next layer, now we can see houses, individual back gardens are marked in some cases, and we can zoom in further and further until we're now seeing individual buildings within the castle. But this still shows a very small proportion of the information it could show. It doesn't show trees, for example. It doesn't show the locations of statues. There's lots and lots of information here that could be shown and that isn't. Because all maps are incomplete, you as a map maker have to choose what to include and what to leave out. If you include too much information on your maps, then they'll become cluttered and difficult to read. So this map from the website crimemapping.com tries to show every crime that's occurred in a neighbourhood over the past four weeks. And as you can see, it's very visually cluttered and it's extremely difficult to work out patterns of crime where most risk occurs and what crimes are occurring by looking at this map. And that's partly because the, of the many different symbols used, some of which are not necessarily um, very self-explanatory. So uh, a black symbol with a, a mask represents a burglary, whereas a symbol with a, another mask, but this time with a person with a hat on, represents a robbery. So we've got all these different symbols, which makes it very visually cluttered. So visually cluttered, in fact, that the website's designers have decided that once you've got multiple crimes too close together, they'll replace all of those individual symbols with a symbol showing the number of multiple records, and then you have to click on each one. And visually, that's very problematic because six crimes or 10 crimes or 100 crimes takes up the same amount of space and has almost the same visual prominence as one crime occurring. But on the other hand, if you include too little information, then people are less likely to understand the point you're trying to make because there isn't enough context. So choosing what to put on your map and what to leave out needs careful thought. And deciding what information to include on a map becomes much easier if you have a clear idea of what the purpose of your map is. What story are you trying to tell? Or what activity are you trying to support? So to illustrate that, I'm going to show three maps of the centre of Berlin, the area around the Museum Island. And this first map is a tourist map. And you can see that it highlights things like public transport stations, the subway network, and also uh, tourist destinations like the Brandenburg Gate and the Television Tower. And it highlights these because they're things that are of interest to tourists. They need to get around using public transport to get to the main sites. But if we look at a map of the same area that's a cycle map, the Brandenburg Gate isn't shown at all because most cyclists are probably going to be locals and so they have less interest in tourist sites and indeed they already know where they are. Public transport is shown but it's given much less emphasis because although you can take bikes on sub, some public transport in Berlin most people who are looking at a cycle map are doing it because they're going to be cycling. 
and it gives much more emphasis to things that weren't really shown on the previous map, like this track through a park. And this third map of Berlin, this is a Soviet era map um, produced by the Red Army and the, the Soviet Army produced maps of many different places around the world to insist, assist their military forces if they were to invade those countries. Public transport is shown, but very, very minimally. If the Red Army were going to invade Berlin, they almost certainly uh, weren't going to do it by public transport. They give extra information that isn't on the other maps. So some of the bridges are marked, for example, as to the maximum weight that they can take so that tank commanders could plan which bridges they could use to cross rivers and other obstacles. And it also highlights other places that aren't on other maps, like this power station, which is used for district heating in the area, because it's important to have control of facilities like that in, to control an area, but that's of very little interest to cyclists or to tourists. So you need to make decisions about what to include on your maps and what to leave out. The best way to make these decisions is to think about what the people who are going to use your map need from you. In particular, when you make a map, ask yourself these questions. How much does my audience already know about this topic? If your audience is an expert in a particular type of crime or a particular problem, if this is a, an issue that you know that they've been discussing uh, for months, you probably need to include less context on your map uh, and devote more space to other things that a beginner might not need than if the people who are going to look at your map don't know anything about the problem already. For example, if it's going to be used at a public meeting to think about crime, in which case you'll need to focus on those needs, which are going to be very different from an expert's needs. Second question, how well does my audience know this geographic area? If they are local people or they are responsible for working in a, a local area and they know the area very well, then you probably need to spend less space on your map, including information that helps people navigate around the physical space versus a map that might be used by policy makers or, or senior decision makers who might be based a long way away and never have been to the area that the map shows. Next question, what will my audience use this map for? Is there a particular decision that the audience needs to make? And if so, how well does the map help them to make that decision? Next, in what context will they be using this map? If it's going to be a, a map projected onto a large screen, then you can include a lot more detail uh, in terms of space, but also your, your viewers might be further away and so they might not be able to see certain things. If the map's going to be printed out and put on the wall, again, you might need to make different uh, design choices. If it's going to be used on a tablet or on a phone, then again, you need to think in different ways about how your audience is going to use your map and how you can design the map so that it can best do that. And then finally, what biases or opinions about this topic might the audience already have? If you think about those, then you can start to think, OK, well, how is this design choice going to influence those uh, preconceptions? Is it going to perhaps reinforce a bias that isn't correct? Is it going to challenge a, a particular way of, of thinking that might allow the people using this map to come to different decisions or at least to, to come to a, a firmer decision. But also, what biases and opinions do you have as the map maker and how might that affect what you're doing and the choices that you're making and how, that, how might that affect how well you are serving the people that are going to look at this map?